Ace, thank you for joining us uh, today. We're delighted to have you. Luke and I will go back and forth and ask you questions. Um, can you say, uh, when did you decide to run for mayor and who was part of that decision? So I would say that I decided to run for mayor really after last year's wildfires. Uh. It is something where I saw the response from the city in terms of not just addressing um, the action for people who are currently in places that don't have AC in their own homes, but also to our unhoused population. The city said that we had 95 shelter spaces, and as I know, we have roughly 3,500 people in Seattle who are currently unsheltered. Yeah. And so I felt there needed to be a significant change, and at the time, there was the assumption that Mayor Durkin would run again, and so I felt that we needed someone else to step up. I came to the decision after talking to a number of my other friends who were organizers and activists like myself, who I actually suggested that they run and they decided not to. And so after going through that process a few times, I said, all right, well, I guess I'm going to be the person to run. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what makes a good mayor? And can you tell us a few examples of effective mayors? So I would say it starts with really having core beliefs. And for me, that starts with trust, honesty, accountability, and transparency. Those are things that are critical, not just for a mayor, but really anyone in a leadership role who is leading a large organization. When it comes to specifically the role of the mayor, what I think is really important is to have not just a vision, but also having the steps and understanding of how to empower your team to actually see that vision. Currently, one of my biggest inspirations is, um, uh, as I blank on her name, oh, um, the mayor of Paris, Anne Hidalgo, mm -hmm. who has been an excellent leader in terms of climate change, uh, who actually is a socialist, and who is someone who's been leading C40, which is an organization of 90 cities across the world, including Seattle, mm -hmm. that are committed to addressing climate change. And so this is someone who not only has that leadership experience, but also works in a way where she understands that you need to actually change the systems as they currently exist in order for us to achieve our goals. And if we achieve those goals, that our city will be that much more thriving, that much more alive. And I feel like Paris really represents that right now. Ace, what, what is a pressing issue facing Seattle that has not received enough attention so far in the mayor's race? I don't know, I feel like we've kind of covered everything. Okay. No, that's good. <laughs> um, I would say the one that I don't really hear enough on is parking. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I bring up parking in particular is that when we discuss that we need to get people out of cars, a big part of that is that we provide so much parking. Um, it's something where all most new buildings actually require parking spaces. And so what I am trying to focus on and really highlight with that is that we actually have better uses for our parking spaces. I think a great example of this actually is outside of Chop House Road yeah. with Petty Rosso and having that great cafe space. I think that's something that we should replicate across the entire city. Thank you. What's your personal relationship with Amazon as a consumer? Do you get a lot of packages? Are you a shareholder, prime member, previous employee? So I'm not a previous employee. Um, I am not a shareholder. I am a prime user. And in particular, during the pandemic, I was someone who, as a high-risk individual, I actually couldn't go out and get things. And so I relied on it a lot in order to receive packages. Um, that being said, I do recognize that there are a lot of issues with the current supply chain that they have. And so that's something I'm interested in working with Amazon on is when it comes to actually delivering packages and something that happens all over Seattle and is not going to go away. What are better ways that we can make it more sustainable and actually integrate it into the overall fabric of the city? Ace, there's been a tremendous accumulation of wealth and a dramatic growth in poverty and homelessness in our yes. region. This is not uh, a result of just one company's presence, but using Amazon as an example, mm -hmm. Amazon has a lot of power in the region, if not the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a dramatic impact on the cost of living for Seattleites and beyond. What would your strategies be to address the growing inequalities we're experiencing? So I definitely have a number of different strategies. I'm someone who has a lot of plans. Yep. Um, I would say that what I really want people to recognize that I feel like is kind of not there yet is that we are a great city 
at saying yes to jobs, saying yes to more jobs. We want more Amazon jobs. We want more tech jobs. We want more entertainment jobs and all the other jobs that come with that. We want to be a growing city, but we don't say the same thing when it comes to housing. And so what happens is you have all these individuals, including someone like myself, who moved here for opportunities, who then have to compete against other people for the existing housing. And so we need to really be focused on allowing for more housing to happen across the city in order to address our current need. But also, in addition to that, really make sure that we are supporting our workers even more. And so for me, one of the easiest ways to do that is to increase the minimum wage. Thank you. What do you think is the best run department in the city of Seattle? And mm. also as, <laughs> a, as a new mayor coming in, which department will need your attention early on? So I have a little bit of insight to this, yep. having worked for uh, Council Member Mosqueda. I worked as her interim policy manager for six months during the pandemic. And it is something where I had a really excellent relationship with the Office of Housing. I think a lot of people feel like because our homelessness issue is so big that they're not doing a great job, but they really are. It's been extremely impressive to me to see how responsive they are, not just in terms of developing more housing across the city, but also allowing and empowering specifically black, indigenous, and other community groups that are led by those groups to be able to have the funding that they need to develop their own affordable housing and their own cultural space. And so that's something where I know right from the get-go that being mayor, stepping in, it's really just about giving them more funding in order to see that continue on. The biggest um, challenge in my mind right now that's not working is our Department of Transportation. And I would say, unfortunately, that a big part of that is due to our current mayor. She is someone who said during her entire campaign that she was going to be a transportation champion, that she was going to be a climate champion. And one of the first things she did was pause the streetcar which I found very confusing. And so one of my biggest things is to, one, honor a number of the promises that were made through our last levy, which is what funded a lot of the projects that we're seeing that have been stalled. And so actually see those come to fruition, but also to empower the current director to actually execute the projects that we need in order to get people out of cars, into transit, and moving around our city in other more sustainable ways. New York City just finished a ranked choice uh, election. They did. If King County had ranked choice voting, and thanks to Councilmember Zahale, we probably will, mm -hmm. um, who would you pick as your number two choice for mayor? Just a two word or three word answer. Two word or three word? In terms of who you would pick. So we're not looking for a statement, we're looking for a name. Oh man. Because I had one person in mind, and then after some recent. Okay, so who, who do you have in mind now? Um, I would say Councilperson Gonzalez. Okay, thank you. Let's talk about policing. Mm -hmm. Policing has become a very divisive issue here in our community and around the country. What's a roadmap for policing that you feel like would be compelling vision for all of the Seattle communities? So. In my mind, what I really hearken back to, and it's kind of great that we just touched on New York City, yeah. is Jane Jacobs as an author and someone who's a neighborhood activist and her idea of eyes on the street. That it's when you have public being able to engage and be outside in community that you actually create safer communities. And so what I'm really focused on is really that environmental design. Um, what are ways in which we can encourage people to actually be active and out in their communities, not just this neighborhood in Capitol Hill, because I feel it's very lively, but in every single neighborhood in the city, because that's an easy way for us as community members to take care of each other. The other thing that I really want to focus on is that public safety is paramount, and we should be focused on retaining 100% of our existing public safety, but the current system of policing simply is not working, especially for people who look like myself, who are seeing the brunt of what's really state-sanctioned violence. And so we need to create new systems and new responses that are simply not a person with a gun. So speaking of new systems and new responses, early on in your administration, you would be tasked with selecting a new chief of police. Yes. Uh, name a couple individuals who counsel you would seek during that search. 
So I'd say the first one automatically is the uh, CPC, so the Community Police Commission. Mm -hmm. There's someone and an organization and body that should be involved at the very beginning. Um, I would say in addition to that, I would really be focused on working with um, the new citywide uh, council members because they're also intended and they have a working history with um, SPD, whether it be council member uh, Mosqueda mm -hmm. or whoever steps into position nine. I think in that way, really recognizing that we need to have community's best interest if we are going to get the police department back to a place where community feels like they can trust them. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's something that has been lacking, not just in the past year, but for many years. Thank you. In thinking about ourselves as a region, can you talk about your vision for building a more effective relationship with King County Executive, with other cities in King County? How, and what is your vision for a more cohesive and equitable region? I think the biggest thing for myself is that I feel like in our current conversations from leadership, whether it be at the city, in other cities, in King County or around the region, we like to pass the buck a lot. We like to say, oh, it's someone else's issue. Oh, this is a regional, regional crisis. Oh, it's just, it's too much for me. And I believe we need to actually lean into the discomfort, lean into the issues at hand and say, no, we clearly had a stake and a responsibility in creating where we are now. We do have a lot of crises, in particular a homelessness crisis that are regional crises, but I believe that part of that is our decision not to build housing for a long time. That's really what's caused it. And so for me, it's about having honest and open and direct conversations and wanting to actually work really hard into the nitty gritty. I think in terms of the current election for a King County executive, for example, I have been um, very heartened by um, current state Senator Joe Nguyen and a lot of the ideas that he is putting forward. I'm very excited about his campaign. At the same token, I believe the Dow also has been doing a great job. And so whoever does win that race, I believe that I will be able to have a really effective communication with them and really say that, yes, there are things that are regional issues, but Seattle also needs to step up and for us to own that. Beautiful, thank you. Mm -hmm. What mid-size or small Seattle employer do you admire and why, especially when it comes to their approach to equity, employee compensation, Ooh. and diversity. Mid-range employer. Mid-size, small, like let's say 20 to 500 employees. 20 to 500 employees, that's hard for me to say because I'm like, how big is Zillow? Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're not, yeah, they're too big. Yeah, they're too big. Okay, well thank you for confirming that yeah. for me. <laughs> um, hmm. It's hard to say because I feel like a number of our employers, I have a conversation with someone who is an employee, um, and usually it's like retail spaces. So that was gonna say, oh, there must be a coffee shop, and I'm like going back my mind, I'm like, no, there's been issues with that coffee shop, there's been issues with that one, and so I think um, if there... We can come back to it too, yeah. we, have, we have some more. So pause for a second, we'll come back to it. <laughs> yeah, do you want us to go on with another yeah. question? We can go on, and you can yeah, come back. Great. Okay. If we talk to the people who worked for you, mm -hmm. um, what would they identify as your best and your worst qualities as a leader and manager? I would say that probably the best and worst quality is that I'm extremely honest and direct. I am from Texas, and so I'm a pretty straight shooter. I'm not Pacific Northwest passive aggressive, and if I see other people acting that way, I will call them out on it, which sometimes is good and sometimes is bad. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that it can be a benefit when you actually have to get things done. Mm -hmm. um, I am someone who, in a group, whether I am leading the group or not, I'll usually keep track of the time and say, okay, we, we have to keep moving on, we have other items. Um, but at the same token, can also be a little harsh and some people feel that they don't have space to be able to speak out. And so I always try and lead with that and be very honest about my honesty and say, you're always welcome to ask me questions. You're always um, welcome to question the things that I suggest. Because I think with anything, and especially coming from architecture, it's all a collaborative process. I can't do this by myself. And even with my campaign, I have such a strong team that as long as I'm empowering them to do the good work that they want to do, then we are all going to be successful together. 
Give us one strategy to help promote a more equitable recovery in Seattle. Mm. Buy local. Great. It's been something that I have done even when I was at the University of Texas, where I went to school in Austin, and have always felt that it's not only economically sustainable, but it's also environmentally sustainable. It's something where you have a lot of great producers. And I know even here in Chop House Row, um, there was Kurt Farm, um, which had all the wonderful ice cream and cheese that you knew was from nearby. And so in many ways, I think as long as people are supporting local businesses and going to their nearest shops, that we are going to recover that much more quickly. Thank you. What is your vision for the entire range of all the people who live here as residents in the city of Seattle to really belong to this community? So in my mind, that really comes down to housing everyone. And I would say that speaking as someone who is both mixed race, being black and Latino, as well as queer, I have grown up in many places where I have not felt welcome. I have had to kind of push my way through in order to actually make space for myself to be successful. And so in becoming mayor, what my focus is, is not to walk through that door that people have opened for me, who have helped me through, but to actually turn around and then break down that door so that no one has to go through the same issues that I do. I think um, when it comes to what I would say my generation as a millennial versus some uh, younger or sorry, older generations is that for them they said well I worked really hard to get here and then you should be able to work just as hard as I did and you should be just as successful. Unfortunately a lot of the systems that we have currently in place make that extremely hard. Case in point, student loans. That is something where that's a federal issue and it's something that affects every single person who's around my age or younger and I also know some people who are older as well. And so we need to do better, not just here in Seattle, but really across the entire US of saying, look, this was an extremely tar uh, trying and hard time for us. We need to create new systems of support so that no one has to go through this again. And in that way, people truly feel like they belong and that they can actually be a part of our city. Thank you. Last question, Ace. All right. We have undecided voters here in our studio. We have NAM, undecided voter. We, we have undecided voters out in the viewing audience. We have undecided vote. Lucy, are you undecided? Undecided voter with a big following. Yeah, I mean, I have a huge youth team myself, so. For someone, for someone uh, debating between you and another candidate or on the fence, why you? So I'd say for two reasons. One is I am committed to serving at least two terms because I recognize that a lot of our issues are not gonna be solved in two or three years. It's gonna take a long amount of time in order to do it. And for me, this is not about a stepping stone to a higher office. This is about me actually getting in and doing the work so that all of us can actually thrive in the city. And the second thing that I will say is that if you are tired of the Seattle process, and if you are tired of the empty promises and sitting at the table and being heard, but actually not seeing that result happen, then I am your candidate because I want us to cut through all of that and actually do the things that people have been asking for for years. I am tired of it. I know many other people are, and that is why I'm running for mayor. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. We know how busy you are and how much there is to do right now. So thank you for spending the time to meet with us. Do you want to take a second and go back to the mid-sized company question? Yeah, yeah we can go back in to that one. Yeah, anybody yeah. come to mind? Hmm. I would say, just thinking of it, just like randomly, um, Dix. Mm -hmm. So it's something where um, they have such a great minimum wage and they actually pay above minimum yeah. wage and they're still able to keep their products low and support the community in so many different ways. And so in that mindset, that is what I believe that other um, businesses should be really striving for. And I think that any time that they do get called out for like maybe having an issue or um, having some kind of concern, they directly address it. I feel like in particular when it comes to this particular mayor, that there are a number of times where she will just ignore something entirely as opposed to actually being honest and having an open dialogue. And I think it's important that 
whatever your position is within the community, as long as you can have that open dialogue, you can come to a point of understanding. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you.